There are three separate and independent hydraulic systems, left, center, and right. All three systems power the flight controls. Each system powers spoilers and an autopilot servo. The center system powers the hydraulic driven generator, the flaps and slats, landing gear, nose wheel steering, alternate brakes, and tail skid. If system quantity is sensed low, the center number one electric primary hydraulic pump is automatically isolated to provide hydraulic pressure to the reserve brakes and steering system. The ram air turbine or RAT provides hydraulic pressure to the flight controls portion of the center hydraulic system. The right system powers the normal brakes. These components are also powered by the indicated hydraulic systems. The pitch enhancement system automatically activates if the left and center hydraulic systems fail. A pump in the right system uses trapped left system fluid to operate the stabilizer. The hydraulic system's controls and indicator lights are on the overhead panel. There are primary pump switches and demand pump rotary selectors. Indicator lights illuminate for low system pressure, low pump pressure, low hydraulic fluid levels, and overheated pumps. Next, we'll look at the hydraulic system components. Each hydraulic system has its own independent reservoir. All three reservoirs are pressurized by bleed air. Hydraulic system information can be seen on the status display. Select the status display. The status display shows hydraulic system quantities and pressures. If a hydraulic reservoir requires refilling, RF appears next to the system quantity. Since the left and right systems are similar, we'll use the right system to cover their common components. The right and left primary pump switches control the engine pumps. These pumps produce hydraulic power when the engines rotate. The right and left demand pump selectors each control an electric pump. These pumps produce additional hydraulic power. Fluid from the left and right reservoirs is supplied to the engine pumps through shutoff valves. The shutoff valves are open when the engine fire switches are in. Pulling the fire switch closes the shutoff valve and depressurizes the engine pump. Now let's look at normal operation of the right and left hydraulic systems. When the switches and selectors are off, the pumps are depressurized and the low pressure lights illuminate. Now turn on the right primary pump. The engine primary pump switches are normally left on. The pressure light illuminates when pump output pressure is low. Now turn the right demand pump selector to auto. An electric motor driven demand pump provides additional hydraulic power either on demand or continuously for periods of high system demand. The demand pump also provides a backup hydraulic power source for the engine driven primary pump.
When the engine starts rotating, the engine pump provides pressure and the electric pump stops operating. If low pressure is detected in the primary pump, the electric demand pump automatically operates. Next, we'll look at normal operation of the center hydraulic system. The two center primary pumps are the number one and the number two electric pumps. They are the main source of power for the center hydraulic system. Now turn on the number one electric pump. Now turn on the number two electric pump. The center hydraulic system demand pump is powered by the pneumatic system. The normal setting is auto. Turn the center demand pump selector to auto. In the auto position, when there is a large demand on the center system, such as operating the landing gear, flaps, slats, and ground spoilers, the air supply valve opens and the pump operates to provide additional system pressure. The pump also operates whenever system pressure is low. When air demand pump operation is not required, the air supply valve closes. When the selector is in the on position, the air pump runs continuously. There is automatic electrical load shedding associated with the center hydraulic system. On the ground, when you have only a single power source, either the APU, external power, or one engine generator, both center system electric driven pumps cannot operate at the same time. Therefore, the C2 electric pump is load shed. The primary pump low pressure light and ICAS message indicate that the pump output pressure is low. The left electric demand pump is in auto and operates to maintain system pressure. Turn off the left engine primary pump to prevent damage or contamination. When other pumps fail, the advisory messages are similar and the results are similar. Touch an ICAS message for further information. The left engine primary pump has overheated. Turn off the pump to try to eliminate the source of the overheat. Other overheat related messages and results are similar for the remaining pumps. Touch an ICAS message for further information.
This message indicates hydraulic pressure is low in the left system. The left engine primary pump and the left electric demand pump are inoperative. Turn off the engine primary pump and the electric demand pump. Continue. When the left hydraulic system has failed, the left autopilot is inoperative. These messages indicate hydraulic pressure is low in the center system. Both center system electric primary pumps are inoperative. Turn off both center electric primary pumps. Continue. The center demand pump selector is on auto, so the air driven demand pump automatically supplies hydraulic power to the center hydraulic system. Recall hydraulic fluid quantities are displayed on the status page. If the hydraulic fluid quantity drops below 0.75, a magenta RF is displayed indicating refilling is required prior to dispatch. If the quantity is below approximately 0.50, the quantity light illuminates and the hydraulic quantity ICAS advisory message appears. If the indications are for the center system, the control valves automatically isolate the center number one electric pump to provide hydraulic pressure exclusively to the reserve brakes and steering system. The reserve brakes and steering isolation light on the pilot's auxiliary panel illuminates, indicating that the pump is isolated. This will be discussed further in a later lesson. Should both engines fail in flight, the ram air turbine or RAT deploys automatically. At air speeds above 130 knots, the RAT provides adequate power for operation of the flight controls portion of the center hydraulic system.